Moving over into a comic book section, the Artist's Alley, we're still in that area of Megacon 2016. The Riley and Kimmy Show is now, well, one of my favorite people because he's part of a thing that has been part of my past for a long period of time, and Kimmy's too, Dan Parent. You're almost like a parent to Archie in a way, right? Much at this point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like his dad and everybody, right? It could be. <laughs> Thank you, first of all, for letting us talk to you here at Megacon. My pleasure, my pleasure. How is Megacon treating you so far? How's it uh, been? Megacon's always good. I've, this is a, my eighth or ninth Megacon, so it's always good to come down here. You, now, I don't know where to go with you. You got Die Kitty Die. We could talk about that. Yeah. Maybe we should. Let's talk a little bit about Die Kitty Die. What is Die Kitty Die for those who are watching this that have no clue? Die Kitty Die is a project that Fernando Ruiz and I started. Now, Fernando is my other Archie colleague, and we just wanted to do something uh, on our own. So we did a Kickstarter last year to fund it. We did very well. We uh, did more than double what we were requesting. So we were able to um, make it a deluxe version, make it like a hardcover with like you know extra stuff for the fan, extra pages. And um, the, the premise of the story is basically uh, Kitty is a witch, a sexy witch character, and uh, her publishers are trying to kill her off because her sales have dropped. Oh, geez. So, uh, but in our world, of course, the comic book characters are also real. Okay. So uh, it becomes sort of a contest to see who can kill Kitty off. And they recruit all their other characters in the comic book world to try and kill her off too. So it becomes almost like a, I compare it to like a Roadrunner cartoon where they're always trying to get off the Roadrunner and they don't get, they're not successful at doing it. It's kind of a little bit of the same premise. That's a trip. Now, where's this available? If somebody says, I want this right now. It's available, you can order it online. Okay. Um, for those who didn't get involved in the Kickstarter, go to diekittydie.com, they can order it. And it'll be out in hardcover um, in July. And it'll nice. be available at conventions also. Well, and, it's, and it's going to be published this fall, starting with um, this fall, Chapter House Comics in Canada, who pu they publish Captain Canuck and a bunch of other things. They'll be publishing Kitty on a regular basis. Woo! So that, that's really cool. It's going to be a series, yes. That's going to make you feel really proud. I mean, have, it's your own. I mean, your own, right? Right. Oh, yeah. No, we're very excited. We're really, really excited. <laughs> but the world of Archie, you're still, I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have a, if I remember right, in next, well, it's actually almost this month, you have something come out in June, when this is posted, it'll be June, I believe you have like a digest that's that's coming out, if I remember. A, a several that are coming out in the next few weeks, and I'm working on another Kevin Keller series, and that's going to be digital to trade, and that starts in June, so you can go on the Archie uh, website, and um Watch it, digi read it digitally first, and order it, and um, and then I'm just working on other um, Ar other random Archie stuff. Uh, we're doing an Archie versus Archie meets the Ramones, and I did the cover to that, one of the covers. Um, and then right now I'm working on our Archie Christmas stories right now. So you brought me back in with like Archie and Kiss uh, thing. I was like, that's what you brought me in. That was pretty cool. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. When you did Kevin, when you decided I'm going to create this character and make it part of the Archie world. Were there Neanderthals out there in, I'm not saying with Archie, but other comic book people that said, you're crazy, don't do this kind of thing? It wasn't so much with the comic book world, it was more the other, the outside world who, you know, just kind of heard about it. Um, and there were, there was some resistance, but, um, you know, once the character came out and um, people read about the character, like the Archie fans were always on board. And that's really who we're catering this towards, is Archie fans, so, um, but yeah, it was, and it was good, and then the other, only other resistance we had was when, in Life with Archie, when they were adults, they married off Kevin. And that got some controversy too, um, one million moms. And then, um, but actually that helped us actually because the sales like skyrocketed as soon as one million moms came out. So, so it, it kind of worked in our favor. There was good out of, they're bad, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly, right, right, karma. <laughs> do, you, do you think we might see someday that turn into live action, the, the adult Kevin? Story well, there is. Uh, I know there's a, there's the, the Riverdale show is coming on next fall right. on the CW, and Kevin's in that series. Okay. So um, yeah, you'll see all the Archie characters in that series in a more um, adult manner. <laughs> okay, I, I follow. All right. The retooling of Archie. Did you? Were you on board instantly? Did it take a, well, I, a, a bit? I, I mean, I, I, I really am not a part of the retooling. Um, I, I am, I'm, f I'm fine with it because I think you have to do what you have to do to keep you know, your, your readership up. Um, but um, yeah, I just I think you both can coexist, and they are. Multiple universes. Doing classic, and there's, there's the new RC2, so um, yeah. Do you, out of curiosity, because you write, uh, probably I assume a lot. Yeah. Do you ever read the other comic books? Uh, do you is that part of your world too? I mean, I do. I mean, I don't keep up with it as much as I'd like to, um, but I do collect. I mean, um, 
through the last few years. I always play, I've always, I collected all of Darwin Cook's stuff. Unfortunately, he passed away, and that was a, and he was a friend too, so that was difficult. Um, but he was one of my big go-tos. Whenever he put something out, I always read that. I love Amanda Connor. Um, so there's there's certain books that I read. I I, I was always more into like uh, independent stuff. Like Love and Rockets was like my favorite comic for years. Um, and so I buy that um, whenever that comes out. That comes out once a year. I buy that. Um, but basically, if I see the art in something and I like it, I'll pick it up. Um, but I'm not a real regular reader of like, DC and Marvel stuff so much as I used to be. Um, I like, um, if anybody has seen this comic, Paper Girls, it's, re okay. it's really good. It's a really good book. I was reading that by Image. So every once in a while, something like that will catch my eye and I'll pick it up. What, what caused you? What is, you know, for me, I know as a kid, you know, Actually, it was a you know an old Neil Adams comic book caused me to get into comic books, really into it. And was there something there for you that sparked you? You said, not did you just liked it, but I want to do this. Well, when I I started out with Harvey Comics when I was little, I was obsessed with Harvey Comics, and then I did get into Archie. Um, and I think early at early age, I saw Dan DiCarlo's stuff, and I, it inspired me. Um, and then I got into the superhero stuff later on, but I always went back to the Archie and the Harvey stuff. So I think there was just something in that early, early stuff with Archie and Harvey that, that stuck with me. And then as I got older, when I was following artists, I always liked the artists who put less into their work than more, like the Alex Toths and those kinds of artists who were able to draw in that clean style without a lot of extra line work. And, and that, that always attracted me. So. so you had to be a fan of Space Ghost. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You gotta love Space Ghost. Actually, I heard it's one of the hardest characters to draw where it looks like you're seeing on the screen. I would think so because just because of the fact that he's, he's there's not a lot of lines and it's it's harder to it's harder to draw characters with less lines. People who have come over to try and draw Archie have said it's a lot harder than they think it is, and it is, it is. Where are you going to be next? Because MegaCon, by the time we upload this, it's over. It's in the history books. Is there another convention you'll be at real soon? Uh, next week I'll be at Niagara Comic Con, and uh, then I'll be uh, off for a little while. And then I'll be going to um, um, Old Massive Comic Con at the end of Mass at the end of June in Massachusetts. And then it's Montreal Comic Con at the beginning of July, and then it's San Diego Comic Con. You're actually going to do all this before San Diego Comic Con, so you're going to be one busy, tired man. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. But I'm promoting Archie stuff, and I'm promoting Die Kitty Die, so it's kind of like got to get it out there. And do you have a website? I didn't check ahead of time because I'll link it on our website and our social media. What, what's your website, my friend? Parent.com. Easy to remember. Yep. Thank you for being on the Riley and Kimmy Show, and I look forward to seeing you in the near future at some other places. Sounds good. Thank you.